Welcome everyone, Questin here with my guide for the best mouse and keyboard settings for Elden Ring. I'm about 50 hours into the game, I've been playing all of it with mouse and keyboard and I want to go over what I've learned so far playing this game with mouse and keyboard that you can apply if you do decide to play the game. Uh, this way. There's quite a few things to cover in the options menu and also some things that you would want to take care outside of the game like your mouse DPI. In fact, that's probably going to be the first point I'm going to bring up. Playing this game with um, high DPI on your mouse is not recommended. I've person I'm personally using about 800. In other games I use about 6000 or regular use in Windows I use a very high DPI setting. If I try and do that in Elden Ring, it's just going to end up being a mess because one of the biggest issues that this game does have with mouse and keyboard, in fact, probably the biggest issue by far, is the mouse sensitivity. It is way, way too fast. And the patches that they've released so far haven't fixed the problem. In fact, in some ways, they've made it worse. Because right now, the camera with my current settings uh, is just fine on ground. It's not too bad. But if I mount up, then suddenly the camera feels like uh, it's Speedy Gonzalez. And same with moving around the menu. It's, it just feels too fast. So they've reduced the camera speed or the uh, mouse sensitivity while you're on foot, it feels like. But they haven't really changed anything for mounted combat or for the menus, which is a problem in terms of setting, uh, setting it up. Well, I'm going to go... Uh, go here is just go over a couple of options and what you want to have on and what you want to have off. So let's just start over here with um, lock on, auto target, and manual uh, attack aiming. Well, manual attack aiming, what does it say? It allows for the manual control of aiming large weapons when locked on, and it doesn't work. Uh, based on what I've seen, what other people have reported. So what it means is that when you're locking onto an enemy, you can still swing your weapon however way you want. And it doesn't work. You will be hitting or you'll be still uh, targeting whatever enemy you're locked on. So it doesn't really matter off on or on. It doesn't really matter. Now, as for auto-target, automatically target an enemy when attacking with no lock. You want this off because you want, when you're not locking onto an enemy, you want to be able to choose which way you're going to uh, to swing. So when I'm um, when I'm moving or when I'm swinging my weapon, I want to be able to decide which way I'm going to swing. Now the way the game uh, decides that on the mouse and keyboard is you hold down the movement key. Like let's say I hold down W. And I'm holding down W here, and I'm swinging forward, but if I turn the camera around here to the right, then I'm going to swing to the right. You don't want the game making that decision for you. So turning it off, pretty much a must. And then finally, toggle auto lock on within this menu. Do you want this on? Do you want it off? I think this is more of a personal uh, preference than anything else. Do you want the game to decide, uh, do you want the game uh, to lock on to an enemy when you enter combat, yes or no? Personally, I prefer to have that because I find myself, especially in the open world, uh, lock, uh, being, uh, preferring to lock on to an enemy than not being locked on to an enemy. But obviously there are situations where this doesn't apply, but you can always click the lock on button to uh, unlock yourself from an enemy if that is a concern uh, to you. You always have that option. And this is becoming a bit annoying. <laughs> I'm trying to destroy this skull. There we go. Um, so that's uh, the first thing I'm gonna go over. Uh, then moving on, camera speed. Uh, plenty of people have said, set the camera speed to zero. It's recommended. I've been playing it with with it on by default. You may want to turn it off to zero and then go from there, see what you prefer. Like that's the thing, you need to test this out. I think zero works just fine. I think also four is not too bad either. Uh, you can enable a uh, wall recovery if you want. Like overall, I'd say these options, for the most part, you can just ignore and leave them by default. They're not really gonna be a problem when it comes to uh, to the PC to settings though. If you want to disable the auto wall recovery, 
um, so the camera avoids walls that's your personal uh, choice I've been playing with these on, on and I've even played the camera speed on four though I am uh, starting to like uh, camera speed on zero uh, more so uh, then moving on no nothing really here that you uh, should be concerned about like yeah your HUD option is really the only thing that you're, you should care about. Uh, the game will start with it on auto, set it to on. I think having that information on constantly is a must because you want to know and not just when the game is telling you uh, or when the game de uh, deems uh, it important for you to know. Now, uh, going to keyboard and mouse settings. Um, when it comes to mouse sensitivity, I, uh, it starts at five, I would lower it. Not all the way, because then the camera ends up being too slow when you're on foot, but something like four or three it would be my personal uh, recommendation for uh, the mouse sensitivity setting. And then moving to key bindings, I'm actually just going to reset all the key bindings to default, and I'm just going to go over everything over here. When it comes to the movement controls, this entire tab here, I'd say the default settings are pretty solid. If you want to change something, that's fair enough, but having WSND, movement control, what does movement control do? Well, if I close the menu, what movement control does is that if, uh, um, if I hold down Alt, then I'm just going to walk very slowly. Alright, so I'm walking here. I need to stop, actually, and then I can switch that. It is a bit clunky in, in the sense that you first have to stop walking uh, before you can switch it on and you do have to hold down the button instead of having it uh, something like something you can toggle uh, on or off because there are certain areas where you will want to move slowly especially when you're on ledges you may want to do so everything else like if you want to change any binds here when it comes to jumping or crouching and all that, that's personal preference. But I think the default ones work pretty well. Uh, one thing I could see is move uh, switching movement control from alt to control if that's your decision. But you can use your thumb from switching that from space to which is your dashing key or your sprinting key. You hold down to sprint. You could uh, you can easily use your thumb move that from space to alt if when when you want to move slowly and everything else is just perfectly fine maybe the jump key you could use something like r over here but f is a pretty solid bind now moving on when it comes to camera control don't be concerned about this the default lock on remove target key is either q or the middle mouse button you can remove a key bind by pressing r so for instance here i just press the r button it removed the key bind there on uh, the reset ca camera lock on target all that. Uh, what's annoying when it comes to mouse and keyboard controls in Elden Ring and in Souls games in general is that you attach multiple things to a similar bind. So you have to, uh, so one bind does it can do multiple things. Uh, then we're gonna look. Let's look at switching armament. Okay. Now, when we're looking at switching our minute, the first thing you want to do is remove these two. The reason you want to do this is because is because if we look, uh, just going back here, if we look at this situation here, it's shift and middle mouse button. But you may be using shift for something else. In fact, you should be using shift for something else. But you don't want to have a situation in the middle of combat where you're holding down shift for another action and you might, I know, switch your uh, your main hand or your offhand weapon. So removing these, I'd say, is an absolute must. Okay, uh, this brings me to, um, to switching your sorceries, switching items, right hand armament. What I do and what I think is recommended, you can use the arrow keys if you so desire, but how are you going to touch those arrow keys? That's the question. Because your right hand or your left hand is going to be on the mouse, depending on what you're using. Uh, and the other hand, like let's say you're right-handed, uh, your right hand is going to be on the mouse. Your left hand is going to be on the left side of the keyboard. You don't have easy access to the to these uh, to these buttons to the mouse curves uh, to the keyboard. Um, a pointer buttons to the arrows on your keyboard so you want your binds to be on the left side so for sorcery a sorcery and incantation i use one to switch them and two to switch items 
pretty easy, pretty simple. You can also, if you so desire, you can also do uh, something like this. Like you can use switch sorcery incantation. This is something I use for Dark Souls 2 and 3. Uh, you can use that, like let's say sor uh, switching sorcery incantation is your mouse wheel up. And switching items is your mouse wheel down. Though that does carry its own problems, but it does make uh, it easy to switch stuff, something. But here's the issue with that, with anything mouse related right now. The mouse is way too sensitive. Like right now I can scroll through a lot of things very quickly. It might be beneficial to use it. Uh, though just be careful that you're not, like if you're using the lock on key, which is your middle mouse button by default, be careful that you're not switching things. Like the mouse is just too sensitive in general. Like I haven't been using personally. I haven't been using when it comes to these keybinds. I haven't been using. I've been using one and two. And what I find here is if I use the mouse middle mouse button, it just feels way, way, way too fast and imprecise. That's the problem. It is imprecise in terms of responsiveness. So. Uh, I might uh, scroll down and I would miss the, the button. My recommendation is just avoid the mouse uh, then and go with one and two. Okay, what about right hand armament, left hand armament? Well, there are a number of choices, but I would go with Z and C or C and Z, whatever you prefer uh, in that. But the reason you would want to use Z and C, well, X is already set to crouching and stand up. Okay, Z and C are keys you can easily access. You just move your thumb from the space bar, which you're using for to dodge and all that. You use it, uh, you use it, you switch, you jump, you roll, you di dash, whatever. And I think that generally will work very well in many situations. You will not have a problem switching between your off hand and your main hand with that. I would not necessarily recommend it for the sake of items or spells, but for the sake of your weapons, I mean, how many weapons are you going to carry? Like three at most, right? So uh, when you look at the equipment uh, slot, you only have uh, a limit of three weapons on either side. And realistically, most people would uh, carry one, uh, one most of the time, two. Like, for instance, I have two in each slot, but keep in mind, this does add weight, so uh, if you're struggling you, with weight, you would only actually use uh, one. To be fair, I'm not really using the shield, like in my case with equipment, I have a shield here, I'm not really uh, using this at all, and I have a bow. The bow is just really convenient, and I certainly have a lot of uh, weight capacity here on this character. I'm using uh, the Radon armor set, uh, along with Carrion Night Shield, Horn bow, cold Shigata, and Meteoric uh, or, uh, or Blade. Though I actually want to use the Moon Veil as my offhand. Why the offhand? Well, the Ushigata is a cold Ushigatana uh, with a Horfrost Stomp. Still a very powerful ability, even though it's been nerfed in the latest patch. Okay, going back to Keybinds, however. So that's what you'd want to do with your Switch Armaments. What about attacking? Good question. So by default, your right hand and two two handed armament. Like your main attack, your right-handed attack is on left mouse button. All well and fine, no reason to change it. Maybe if you're left-handed, that's fine. Your strong attack, however, that's where you start getting into problems. Your strong attack is set to default shift plus left mouse button. That genuinely is a ra really terrible bind. So I'm actually just going to remove that, remove these two. Anything that requires a combination of keys is not a great uh, situation. So what can you do, however, with these? Well, with skill, let's just go over that because I'm going to touch on guard and strong attack in just a second. I'll touch on those last. For skill, what I use is free on my keyboard and one of my side mice mouse button for it as well. So I've got the side mouse button. That's actually the main bind I use. Uh, for the skill attack, so in this case the Horfrost uh, stump, I just click that, click it, it's pretty solid, pretty accurate, uh, and, it, and it's fairly easy to use. Like, free is more of a secondary bind in this case, uh, but yeah, you can aim pretty easily with the mouse and keyboard. That's the main advantage, by the way, of mouse and keyboard, you can aim far better. Okay, 
Uh, then skill, uh, use item and event action. I would actually reverse these. So I would use E to use item and I would use R for event action. Why would I use E as opposed to R for using item? Why would I switch these two around? Well, the explanation is simple. E is a, is a bind uh, that's easier to reach than R. Like you're still gonna use your index finger for both of them. You're gonna move from your index finger from the D key on your keyboard if you're right-handed you're gonna move that and you're gonna switch uh, you're gonna move that to E and that's pretty that's a pretty easy movement from uh, D to E no problems whatsoever it's a bit uh, you need to put more effort to reach R and you're gonna be using items or your flask for instance you're gonna use your flask a lot more than you're gonna do an event action so that's why I would switch these two around I think from software doesn't really put a great deal of effort into thinking okay how are people going to have their hands on the keyboard how is that going to work okay and then finally we're left with strong attack and guard on the mouse and keyboard what should you use well that depends i'll be honest that genuinely depends on what you're using so for instance if i have a shield right if I have a shield and I'm using a main hand weapon that I might want to do a strong attack with, like let's say not necessarily Unushigatana, but let's say I scroll down here, I go to a different weapon, I equip the halberd, or not necessarily that uh, particular halberd, like let's say the banished knight halberd, right? Which has a heavy attack. Like you might do something like this. In this kind of situation, if you want to, if you want to use a halberd or if you want to use a single weapon, then you may want to do something like this. You set your strong attack to shift. Um, no, you, you set your guard to shift and you set, uh, uh, just removing that, you remove that. And you set your strong attack, you set your strong attack to right mouse button and you guard to shift. Using shift as a blocking key works pretty well, doesn't cause any major issues, though you are going to strain your pinky uh, to an extent. Like this is something I've noticed in uh, other Souls games that I've played and God of War and other titles that if I am holding uh, the shift key for a long periods of time using my pinky, uh, it is putting quite a bit of strain on it but it, it it does work i wish you could use caps lock in, in this game because caps lock is a genuine buy like i use that in god of war i use that in jedi fallen order um caps lock should be as genuine bind it is a genuine bind you can't actually use caps lock in this game if you click on it it will not work so we're left with shift now that's a general usage situation right your heavy attack is right mouse button, your light attack is left mouse button, shift is your blocking key. Okay, that's the general use, but there is a major but here. Uh, going to equipment, what I'm going to do here in in equipment is I am going to equip my Wushigatano again. I'm going to drop the shield. What? Uh, and so I'm dual wielding two weapons of the same time, two katanas in this case. And what do they have? Well, if I hold down my guard key, they do this, this attack moveset. And this applies to any combination of two weapons of the same type. You get, a, well, you get to tap out. <laughs> All right, what you get is a tap out, <laughs> in my case, uh, by Windows, because I'm pressing too much shift. Yeah, you shouldn't be using shift for this, because it is pretty awkward to pull off. What instead you should do in this kind of situation where you are uh, dual wielding weapons, and it is a very effective way of playing the game, what you want to do is you switch these two around. So I put shift as my heavy attack key, it, it does make it awkward, and I put my guard key uh, or my left hand armament, I put that on the right hand mouse button. So right now with the dual wheel katanas, which is what I'm using, 
I do this uh, attack uh, moveset chain or this chain attack with them where I'm dual wielding them and I hitting with both of them I'm doing that with the right mouse button so the situation here does depend on what uh, types of weapons you're using if you have a shield you shift to guard if you don't have a shield if you're dual wielding weapons or some other situations uh, use the right uh, right mouse button for that okay and those are your mouse and keyboard controls how to set them up in a really good way that will work now let's talk about video settings just very quickly and some things to touch on this game doesn't have the best optimization of a title I've seen. The reason is it runs in DirectX 12. And DirectX 12 does have the possibility of allowing greater performance, but the developer needs to put more work. From Software's PC ports have generally been pretty shit. Let's be absolutely clear on this. They have no excuse for the quality of the PC ports that they've released so far. In 2022, they should do better. We do expect better quality. The game is great, but the PC port certainly isn't good. So the performance of the PC port isn't that great. The problem uh, is is as follows. They're using shader, uh, they're using caching for a lot of things. So every time you see a new attack, every time you see a new enemy, or you go into a new area, the game is gonna save that in a cache. Now your performance will improve the more you play the game, but when you're seeing something new the first time, and not on a playthrough, the first time you play through it ever, it's probably gonna run really badly. Now, people are reporting with the latest patch that the problem, the severity of the issue has been reduced, but it is still there. There are still FPS drops, there's still stuttering, there's still issues. Now, what can you do to reduce that, to improve your performance? Right now, I have an RTX 2080 Super on an i7-9700K CPU with 32 gigs of memory, and this game is installed on an NVMe driver. And I struggle to maintain 60 FPS. What are the kind of settings you can reduce? Well, pretty much everything. Personally, I play with depth of field and motion blur off. I don't like those settings. Some people may like to play with those settings. They don't really affect performance, but I do turn them off. Now, in terms of actual performance, things like shadow quality, lighting quality, effect effects do make a major impact. So does reflection quality. If you want to keep texture quality high, fair enough. If you want to reduce anti-aliasing for better performance, that's also a thing. As a, uh, SSAO also has a major uh, a major impact on that. You can also reduce shader quality and that might have an impact because hey the game is saving a lot of sh shaders in a cache or it's saving a lot of things in a cache. Grass quality like shadows, grass, lighting, reflections, reducing those will have the biggest impact on your performance in this game. You're not gonna get a constant 60 FPS however regardless of what you do because of the fact that the game is saving things in cash. Now I can run the game in many areas right now as I've played over 50 hours at a pretty much constant 60 FPS but certain areas like this don't run at 60 FPS and I do get frame drops at max settings. I am I've been playing on max settings for quite a bit of time here in this playthrough and I'm still getting major FPS drops. It's nothing too terrible and many of the actual hard bosses and encounters are not in an open area but like this. But yeah, I am getting frame drops and frankly this is not a problem you can solve with video settings. You can reduce whatever you want. Like as I've said, shadows, reflections, volumetric, lighting. You can reduce whatever you want. It will never go away. You can reduce the resolution. It will not go away. It will, it will be better. It will be improved. But those problems are not going to go away because of the way they've handled the optimization of this game. And they've decided to use DirectX 12 when they really should have just used DirectX 11 if they weren't going to put the effort to really take advantage of the possibilities that DirectX 12 provided them. In fact, the vast majority of games that I've played that had DirectX 12 support ran better in DirectX 11. Just a plain fact. Because it requires more effort from the developers to actually make it worth it. Clearly they did not put the effort, they were focused on other things. Will there be a patch to fix these issues? I don't know. I don't know if there will be a patch to fix the camera issues, the mouse sensitivity issues specifically. We don't know. Given their track record, I would not necessarily expect it to be quite honest. I mean, they didn't really patch Dark Souls 2 or free from the issues they had. Can we expect them to fix the issues of Elden Ring? I'm mean, granted Elden Ring is a lot more is probably their most popular game by far. So maybe they would, 
but I wouldn't hold my breath for it. Questine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and see you next time.